if you just do it for fun or didn't know that it was wrong, is the horoscope really bad? We looked at the – this was the question of the week last time. What do you guys think? Because a lot of people say, oh, I just do it for, you know, don't actually believe in it or trust in it, you know. So where does that leave it? I personally think it falls underneath idols. Okay. You like know, how you so? Know, like Buddha. Oh, I don't really believe in Buddha or freedom, but I have the statue in my house because I think it's a cute little decoration. Okay, so you think it's just like the same principle is what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so you're saying it is bad. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys think? It's a hard question. It is a hard question. Do I think it's bad for you? Like, do you think the practice itself is bad? Like, immoral? If you don't know it's bad? Or if you're doing it just for fun? Um, yes. Okay. And why do you say that? Well... Because it, it opens you up to uh, demonic influences and stuff. Okay. And it can, it, it, it'll lead you into other things too. Okay, like what other kind of things? Visiting the psychics or okay. things like that. It opens that door. Okay. Anybody else? I think Chuck's on the same um, yeah. on, on a good good point and on the same line as Chuck. Yeah, as we were talking about yesterday, oh, not yesterday, last week. Um, demons can see what you're doing and they'll use that to their advantage. Right. And so if they see you reading a horoscope and they and you're just doing it for fun, you mm -hmm. know, not really believing it, well, they can make those things come true, you know, yeah, and then they can believe. make you start believing it's true. It gets you in for other like Chuck was saying. Oh, okay. Were you, did you ask something to say that? Same thing. Just okay. kind of add that. And then the more it gets you to believe in it, the more you want to know your future. Right. Okay. Other, yeah. If this is true, let's see what else is true. Right. Is that are, are, are you asking just the act of reading it? Like, like not doing anything about what you do. Do you think that there's a, a difference? If so, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. Okay, go ahead. Like, the act of reading it, uh -huh. like, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Reading words, nothing wrong. You're basing my decisions and stuff off of it. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Okay. But, oh, yeah. That's... Which are you asking? Which, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm asking a question for you guys to answer, so if, you, if that's where you took it, then that's fine. Okay, because I, I understood the question like just the act of reading it. Okay. And so you're saying it's like, not wrong well, to no, but He it. says if you just do it, so to me that seems more like you're you're acting right. on the horoscope, like taking its advice on that one. Yeah. Okay, so we are putting a distinction between actual reading and actually acting upon it. Yes. yes. Okay, is everybody taking that stance? I just want clarifying. Yeah. You're I mean, not? There, there is a difference. There okay. Is a difference. No. Now, I, I'm not judging, guys. I'm just asking a question, <laughs> okay? The act of reading it uh -huh. is the same as just, like, putting a idol in your home. Well, like, okay, okay. okay. Horoscopes, I don't know if they still do. They used to come in newspapers, right? I think yeah. they still do. They still do. They still do, right? Yes. So if you, like, does that mean you should not have a newspaper? <laughs> no, right. no, because... In your house? Here's the thing. No, hold Why on, hold on. I'm going to see. It? Like, okay, okay so but if you just are turning the pages and you read the words... Just there's nothing well, why wrong are you with reading it? it? Uh, like, because like, like, you're turning the pages and you're reading and you're like, oh... Right, but if you just glance at it, fine. But if you're actually <laughs> okay, reading the so, words and getting into it, it gets yeah. into your mind. Just like if you listen to uh, a song with a whole bunch of demon stuff in it or a horror movie. It gets in your mind. And as the day goes on, since it's already in your mind, you know, demons can bring it to... Mem it's on memories. Reddit, bring it to memory and okay. say, 
Oh yeah, remember you were supposed to see a bird at this time passing this dog, so that way you get good luck for the rest of the day. I'm gonna take a wild you guess know? and say you don't read the horoscope because <laughs> no, I'm pretty no, sure no. that's not what it says. I do read them, but yes, I don't read them because I feel like it's something I shouldn't do. Okay, so um, we are having okay. some people say there is a distinction, some people say there's not a distinction. Just, just, just an example of why you would read it. At, at a Chinese restaurant, it, like a lot of times they do the placemats with yes. the Chinese horse, though, yeah. and you're bored sitting there waiting for your food, and so you're reading you're the reading Like they have like the year of the dragon and the year yeah. of the dragon. No, I'm talking horse. about initially going out of your way and looking it up and reading it. Oh. Like it's going, it's on Facebook and it says blah 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 is this, blah 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 is that. Yeah. Do you stop and read it, or do you just scroll past it? You know, that's what I'm saying. She might have a point, guys. I, I, want, you guys to, I want you guys to offer your counter to this. Okay. And can you come closer? That's why you're going next. It's starting to die down now. No, th- this this is is the way I see it as like with reading it on Facebook or something. All right, like there's like plus you're dumb, reading dumb well, quizzes well, and stuff like that. Yeah, people that people do drama. That it, it holds no significance, but people do it for the fun, you know, to see what kind of result they get or whatever. Right, right. No. So if if you are scrolling past it and, and you read it just to say, oh, look, I'm not supposed to um, go outside today, you know, just like, haha, you know, but then you're not following through on anything. Right. But what if you go outside and something really bad happens to you because the demon is trying to get you to believe what you read? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it opens, I mean, like Michael said, it, it, it is a genuine inquiry. No, no, it is. It is. And it so, opens the door. And technically, um, Ben is right to answer his way, and you're right to answer because the way the question is worded could go either way. Yeah. It is said if you do it just for fun, regardless of you know, yeah. or you. Just, so it, both of you guys are, are answering the question correct. You know. Uh huh. So, any other any other thoughts, guys? What my, do you think? My my only thing is. Don't do things that can put you in compromising positions because, like you said, just a tiny bit, if you, if the devil, you know, if he sees you doing something, he's going to so use everything. your main point so is like, erring on the side of caution. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So basically... I don't think you're um, going to go to hell for it. <laughs> but I think it's a, not a good idea to do it. Okay. Right. So you're more taking what Paul says about, you know, avoiding the very form of evil as like a literal like you know as much so as possible in every aspect and he's more saying that maybe that doesn't really apply so much to this yeah it, that yeah okay like, like like i i i don't my personal belief is like if 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 you read a, a horoscope and it says don't go outside and you're like haha that's fine i'm supposed to go outside you go outside and do your thing and and that I, I don't think that a demon could influence you to get hit by a vehicle because I think that you're protected. You're a Christian. I think that you're protected. Okay. <laughs> don't look at me to validate your view. I'm just I'm just asking yeah. a question. He's still oppress you though. No, hold on. So he's still he's okay. still answering. Hold on. And so I, I I don't believe that that would happen. Um, I I, I mean I, I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem like it, it would to me. Okay. Um, like, guess, uh, you I guess your like, like, like if, if, if you're, you know, doing a Ouija board or something where you're intentionally trying to contact huh? evil yeah. things, then you're totally opening yourself well, up. Well, now, hold on. Let, let me kind of, let me, I'm, I'm not offering my opinion. I'm just trying to, <laughs> okay? I am not offering my opinion. I'm just saying. Technically, Ouija boards, people don't always use them to contact demons, and it's actually right. marketed as just a fun the thing. Fun. So, right. And a lot of people don't know it's wrong. Yeah. And I, I, uh, maybe the Ouija board. Was I knew somebody. They were just playing <laughs> around just with it. To a dark and it was area. actually moving their hand, and they got freaked out, and they like threw it away or whatever because they didn't know it could actually do something. Now hold but on, every, hold on. I just want to see. Did you three have anything to say before we get this carried away? <laughs> just, I, 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 I was too scared to join it. Um, more just like because there for a while, like going through, like just being interested in like Chinese zodiac and just kind of. You know, just seeing the differences in culture. Uh-huh. Like, I use it for more educational. Okay. Like, okay, you know, this is their culture, this is our culture. But I never take it to hurt. Okay. But I've never had any problems. Okay. So, I I mean, it could really be, really go either way. I think it's more of your conscience. Okay. All right. So, so, so with, with the Ouija board argument, 
I, I don't think that there's anybody out there that, because Ouija boards are a big thing in media and stuff like that. I don't think there's anybody that can legitimately say, I didn't know that this wasn't. Oh, this some, is when they first came out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, so I, I don't think you can hold it on the, the same thing. On that argument. Like, if okay. you're playing with this, you know that you're trying to do something supernatural. Well, no, I'm not. Once again, please do not think that I'm trying to offer my opinion. I'm just think. Yeah. I actually have talked to a lot of people, even here in Tularosa, who said that's not for contacting demons; it's just a game. So I mean, uh, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that one. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And 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 I think that you're right that a lot of people like genuinely know that, they're, but a lot of people just deny the demonic and therefore think that it's just not a thing. But then other right. people don't even know that it is associated with the, like like dream catchers. Right. That's not a thing of the demonic. It's just a a, a thing to hang on my wall, you know. So and I'm not sure if, if if you're really the right direction there. But go ahead with what you're saying though. Or were you done? Oh, no, I was done. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Anything else before we move on? Gracie, you, you, you got to think. Cause I, I, I see you over there stewing. I see you stewing. <laughs> Calm down, Gracie. I, 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 like I said, I don't think you'll go to hell for licking. I don't. It's just... Do you need to take a rage dump? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like... Me, personally, I don't want to um, open myself up to something like that because... Is something I am gullible enough to believe. If I see, you know, um, the uh, the love of my life wearing the color blue today, you know, isn't that one of the things or something? I'm, you're the one telling the story, but I'm just asking questions. <laughs> they're, they're, they're more like things to avoid and stuff because, like, this is a bit, you know bad oh, okay. time for you, and so avoid doing this thing. Mm. It. it uh, I think most of the time they don't really go into like you're gonna you know do this and you're gonna find somebody. Oh. Like, it, it's, that's more like yeah, fortune more, cookies. Yeah. yeah. It, but yeah. but that actually, actually that's my next question is how do you feel about fortune cookies? Like can you read a fortune cookie? Like, um, I mean, it's a fortune. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do them as fun, but I don't. I mean, like you know, like. So. Today huh. you're yeah, read. actually, that's kind of yeah, supports his view the there. Horoscopes. I know. I know. Like you read it and you're like, ha ha. I, yeah. do have no I actually, um, I do want to offer my input on this one. I do not read the fortune cookies unless they aren't really fortunes. Like at the bamboo garden, they don't actually have fortune cookies. You just say like, have a good day or something. It's like, okay, I'll read those ones. Or like they'll say like little nuggets or something, but they're not really fortunes. I don't. I purposely do not read the fortunes because I, I honestly don't feel like I, I like, should. I like the so. Miss Fortune cookies. <laughs> those ones are kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your son will get AIDS today. <laughs> okay, that's a bad example, friend. Bad example. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm going to go get Micah checked. <laughs> Thanks for jinxing us, Grace. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, anything else? I'm going to the next slide. I'm doing it. We're moving past the question now. Okay, all right. We'll be back to it. Don't worry. <laughs> so tonight we're talking about the tools of the cult. Okay. Now, this is actually a two-parter, so whenever it starts getting around that time, we'll just stop and we'll pick it up the first Tuesday of November. And then we'll actually finish up talking about the cult in November, um, so we're only going to have two months of it. Um, which is, I think, good, because I felt like the cults kind of just seems to go on for forever. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many. So, so many. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so the first thing is... In the world of the occult, um, they kind of have an appearance of something that's not actually um, how it sounds like. For instance, one is they have psychosexual love instead of unconditional love. So in other words, love that's with the, you know, the, the brain, psychosexual. Like you know how doctors will tell you love is just uh, something that, that your brain tells your body or your body tells your brain or whatever, or whichever one they say. I forget. You know where it's basically uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Hormonal yes, a hormonal. Yes, thank you. A hormonal reaction. Um, that's psychosexual love. It's something that that it can be explained. We're, and uh, with the cult, they kind of tend to go towards that kind of. Oh, it's all about feelings more so than about actions. And so, in the cult, you're going to find a lot more things like orgies, whereas in Christianity, you're going to find a lot more things like sticking with a stubborn spouse. You see a lot more things like forgiving people past what you think they deserve. So I mean, so that's kind of a, a big thing there. Um, 
they're going to have diversions over sin in the cult rather than rather than salvation. They're really not going to even emphasize salvation, the idea that you know you need to be saved because they're going to kind of shy away from that whole idea that you even need to be saved. You know, it's just it's something that um, you know I don't know how else to say it. Just offer you different um, things to I don't know how to say it. Um, keep keep you occupied rather than rather than that and. Uh, so, like a good example of that would be like uh, rituals and, and different things like that. Uh, you know, instead of saying, "Okay, yes, you need to admit that you are a sinner," and then acknowledge Christ for salvation. You know, uh, always about these little side things, and and we'll get more into that. I don't really want to delve too much into it in this slide. Um, they offer, and now I really want you to hear this one. They offer a sense of belonging to people, which is something that really can't be dismissed because people really do. Um, want to feel like they belong somewhere, you know. And with the world of the cult, there really is this emphasis with you're weird, you're abnormal. That's okay, you know. You you, you have a place here, you know. And and that's actually a lot of people in the cult just get in through through ways like that. And then they just start kind of thinking differently, and things just kind of slowly start getting introduced, and they just kind of find them find themselves in places that they didn't necessarily intend to be or like someone will have like let's say for instance we were watching that show about people with weird with strange addictions um and they were talking i think it's actually called my strange addiction yeah. and uh, there was this one lady who who you know had this addiction of drinking blood you know and and it starts something like that you know you'll be younger or something and you'll taste blood and you're like oh okay that kind of tastes good or whatever and then you'll just kind of you know sometimes go to weird places with it, you know, and, no. and because they're kind of looked down on, they'll look for other people who kind of validate how they feel um, so that, you know, well, they just don't understand. In fact, when we get to Satanism here in a couple weeks, you're going to see that that's kind of a, kind of a theme in Satanism too. Um, but anyways, a sense of belonging rather than God actually bringing a holistic healing to your body and soul, you know what I mean? Rather than facing the problems and actually working through them, they kind of have a more condone it attitude. Um, for instance, for the child molester, for instance, uh, you know, God would be more focused on the healing of the child and, and the healing of that person who is who is doing that. You know, changing their heart rather than just admitting a dark side. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. God always points out that we have sin in us, but then He says, "Okay, now we need to, you know, fix that." You know, He doesn't leave us where we are. He He, he helps us to find healing through those situations. But in the world of the cult. That's not really the theme. It's more like you're kind of different than other people, and they're not going to understand you, so you need to find other people who think like you, you know, instead of fixing the problem. Um, it's it's more – everything in the cult is really focused on the ego, the I, you know, the self-fulfillment, uh, self-realization. We looked at the New Age last week, and we were looking at this with, with the whole, um, you know, well, once again, the, 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 the idea of, of – you know, finding your inner, your inner power and stuff. Whereas in Christianity, you find more of self-sacrifice. You know, um, loving God and loving people even as yourself. You know, the idea of putting other people before you. You know, um, your neighbor has something that you want, but you're gonna put him first instead of taking it from him. You're just gonna realize the fact that he has something and that's okay, and you just kind of have to let that go because you love him, right? So. Um, um, some certainty in chaos. See, whereas the Christian really doesn't have any certainty in this world. You know, we're called uh, exiles. You know, uh, we're, we're foreigners. We're, we're, we don't we don't belong here on this earth. And it talks about a lot of stuff like that. And it talks about a lot of things about how, us having to have faith in the situations. If you look through Revelations, for instance, it talks about all these really scary things that are happening and how God's people have to stand on the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony through these things. Whereas in the cult, it focuses more on offering an amount of of, of what seems like certainty. You know, um, things that will help you to find refuge from the craziness of the world. You know what I mean? Like um, our cults have, or our, our, our rituals have special meaning, you know, and special things that are going to help us. Another thing that you see with the cult is power and knowledge. It's always about the secret knowledge, and it's always about, like, for instance, Satanism. I don't really want to get too much into it because we're going to actually have a whole night where we talk about Satanism. But, you know, it's this, you know, Organized religions are, are, are the bad guys, and it's a secret religion that, that, that the 
that the other things are trying, the, the religions are trying to squash, and this is this secret knowledge, you know, uh, the Gnostics, where it's a secret knowledge that Jesus handed down only to a select few, you know, um, uh, the New Age, where you have to have a spirit, where you have a spirit guide who tells you secret things, you know, uh, really in the cult you see this over and over again, secret knowledge and a hidden power, a mystical power, you know, something that that wasn't. Um, I mean, you, you remember when we looked at the Kabbalah? I think that was last week. Um, that that Judas, uh, Jewish mysticism. You know, what what were they talking about? They were talking about secret knowledge that was only handed down to the select teachers, and you have to go through this whole thing, um, or uh, the, the secret power. And this was even in the in the Freemasons, if you guys remember, the secret power. Uh, you know, that was handed down with, with the masonry and stuff. And it's like, okay. You sure you're not a cult, though? <laughs> um, anyways, rather than um, trusting in God, and obviously we have we have power, but it's not a secret power. It's a power that's been handed to us called the Holy Spirit. I mean, <laughs> it's not really a secret power. That's something that God offers to people. You know, in fact, in, in the prophet Joel chapter two, he even says, you know, that this is for everyone, for the male <coughs> and the female, for the slave and the free. You know, it's, it's for all these different people. Um, so. Uh, did I do that? Yes, I did. Uh, any questions on that about the skewed standards? I just wanted to kind of show how the cult usually has a um, a dark side to the to the light things, you know. Um, so the cult really thrives in places that are unscientific, in places that don't use reason and logic. Um, for instance, our culture, as much as we've come with science, you know, it, it seems like you know. Ah, science, you know, and a lot of people even, you know, don't believe in Christianity because of science. And it's like, well, no, not really. You know what I mean? A lot of times people don't believe things just because our culture is very unreasonable. You know what I mean? When when you can honestly believe that there is no absolute truth, when you can honestly believe that everybody sets their own standard of truth, that's not logical. That's not well-reasoned. You know what I mean? It's not scientific. It's, it's not. It's just um, kind of... Haywire, right. you know, and and the cult really thrives in that kind of at an atmosphere, um, which is one of the reasons why uh, the cult thrives in places that don't have a very good uh, legal system, like New Mexico. They don't have a very good church influence, like New Mexico. Uh, they don't have a very good. Um, what are some good examples? Um, We kind of have a lot of druggies and uneducated people. Well, even there isn't a good parental system. Yes, structure. absolutely. The authority structure is just completely screwed. Um, and these are all things that really help the occult to spread. Um, so it's unscientific. You know, in the scientific world, um, you know, you do things by 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 testing them. But with the cult, it's these things are beyond testing. You know, if a house is haunted, for instance, how are you going to put that in a test tube? I mean, like you really can't. Mm -hmm. You can't ask a demon to come to a science lab and then run tests on him. You know, it's just <laughs> it's it's something that, that that you really can't. And uh, it, it relies on the metaphysical. You know, everything about the cult is past the physical. You know, like Chuck brought up, um, I believe it was last Sunday morning, he was talking about uh, Christian science. You know, where they just kind of deny the physical. And Christian science is, is, I mean, let's be honest, it is very demonic in its idea. Um, and and a lot of a lot of it is, you know, just the, the denial of, of the flesh. You know, once again, you see that again and again in the cult where. It's all about the spiritual things. I mean, even the Gnostics did this back in the days of Paul. You know, we are two part beings. Our flesh is incorruptibly evil, and our spirit is in, uh, um, just completely good. I said that wrong. Our flesh is unredeemably evil, yeah. and our spirit is incorruptibly good. <laughs> I knew that that sounded wrong when I was saying it. I was like, that does not sound right. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, and you just see that kind of dualism. That's what's called dualism, two part, um, and then uh, once again the irrational thing. But I already kind of said about that. Um, so the cult kind of works in stages. Um, it, it always works in stages. Uh, usually, uh, it'll it'll start real simple, real easy as just an exposure to the cult. Um, things technically, um, since you guys brought it up, uh, where it's just like 
you get exposed to something like like a Ouija board. You know what I mean? Something that um, maybe you just don't even really fully understand it. And oftentimes at a younger age or by someone who you see as a mentor. Um, not always this way. It can happen through any any number of means, but sometimes it's there where your guards down. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just an initial exposure, and that usually um, goes on to a belief in the thing. Like, let's say, for instance, when you were a kid, you saw something that was scary, so when you're older, you kind of believe in ghosts. Uh -huh. See I mean? An initial exposure that kind of develops into a belief. And then once you have a belief in something, um, even if you just believe in, for instance, psychics, um, that's really the first step to going into practicing it. Now, I know that sounds overly simplistic, like obviously, but... You know, that is kind of important to notice because a lot of us, you know, believe in things in the occult, um, you know, that we just kind of think, we don't really think twice about because it's just we've grown up with that's the way it is, you know. Um, like a lot of us would probably even say that we believe in things like ghosts, even though the Bible shows against that. Or maybe we grew up believing in ghosts and maybe you don't now, but I mean, a lot of us at least one point in our lives believed in ghosts. Um, and, you know, it kind of just flows in that. So you got exposure, belief, practice, and then involvement. Um, practice is different from, from involvement because practice is more of an initial... Um, not Involvement is more like full-fledged. And practice is more like maybe occasional or maybe just testing the waters. I think involvement is... You're dedicated into it. Yes, I think that's, yeah. a good, that's a good way to explain it. Practice is more like... You're just maybe like a, a newbie, you know. Uh, what is it called? A, a, a novice. <laughs> um, now, the cult, it should be noted, is not a danger to true believers. Now, let me clarify what I'm saying. As a Christian, you don't get to play with evil things. I'm not saying go out and play with the Ouija board, play with tarot cards. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that we don't have to be afraid of demons being able to come and conquer us, for instance. So, you see, there's a big difference there because some people think, just because I'm a Christian, I can go and do whatever I want. I can go and follow lawlessness. I can go and partake of orgies because I'm saved. It's like, well, okay. I kind of see, I guess, where you got started, but I don't see how you got to that conclusion. Uh, <laughs> so there's a, not a danger so long as we're not pursuing the things. You know. Um, there was something else I was going to say with that, and I just kind of lost my train of thought. Um, also, I will say this, that, that it is very much a, a, a danger to people who think that they are saved that are not. If you are trying to find your salvation through being a member in a church, through you know trying to do all the right things and be a perfect person, and everything, then you're still in danger of the cult, absolutely. But I'm talking about people excuse me, who are genuinely believed, who, who their faith is in Jesus Christ. You know, The Holy Spirit is doing a work in that person. We know that that person is safe from the occult. Now, I would also like to say, this is what I was going to say, that that doesn't mean that a Satanist can't kill you. Okay. That doesn't mean that someone involved in the occult can't kill you. I am saying that the tools of the occult <laughs> can't harm you, okay? You don't have to be afraid of going out into all the world because God is, like like, like Ben was saying, uh, God is definitely with you. Um well, and it even says, you know, why fear those who can kill the body? Yeah, and but can't do anything about the soul, exactly. Right. And the 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 idea there that he's trying to say is that only God can can condemn the soul or re redeem the soul. Um, and experiences and feelings are always number one. Um, occultists will believe things, and oftentimes they don't even realize it. I mean, I mean, let's I should say it differently. The majority of the times, an occultist really won't even know that they are wrong. <laughs> You know, I mean, that, that goes without saying, but, I mean, think about it like, you're a Christian, right? You wouldn't think twice about it. It's just Jesus is real and God's real and it's just how it is. But now imagine that same certainty as an occultist. You see what I'm saying? Where they don't even, it doesn't even enter their brain that they might actually be wrong. Um, so there is that. Um, and then they see things and the demons tell them things that, that sound like truth because they're a little bit naive, let's be honest, they're a little bit naive. And so they just kind of take what the demon says for fact. This was my dead ancestor that came in the seance. See what I mean? And so then they genuinely believe in the thing. And then they, they think that they can play with these powers and that they're going to be okay. Um, yeah. And we're actually going to look at that with one of the thing, one of the tools that they have charms. But we'll get to that in just a second. Um, 
the occult really is a natural offshoot of reinventing God. Remember, mono, monotheism was first, seeking, believing in one God. That was first. We saw that in the Garden of Eden. But then, as people kind of became more and more sinful, they kind of changed their their ideas of God, and then they kind of eventually got to the place of having multiple gods. We see this in history, um, and then eventually they came to a place of you know with all these gods in existence, where it opened the door for the uh, for the opportunity of of an archetype of the typical god, um, and, and and that really, I think, really uh, caused the cult to really become a thing. Because remember, it, Paul talks about these things as being doctrines of the demons. And so whenever there's a demon involved in it, they're going to try to usher things in, like Ouija boards and stuff, to try and get us to get anything to get our attention off of God. Um, obviously, the first step of that is believing in multiple gods, but it, it, that's not good enough, and it'll always go a step further than that. Um, we see... The occult has really been involved with most ancient cultures. I mean, when you look at Egypt, Babylon, Assyria, I mean, yeah. it's there. It's in all of them. Uh, Greece, uh, Rome, you know, it's, it's in all of them. And uh, it's something that, that is very much so um, prevalent in history. But then it, it goes a step past that, too. Because then, as history went on, they kind of started combining their gods. They started combining their occultic behaviors. You know, eventually you had conglomerations of beliefs and traditions and rituals. You know, in the Roman Empire, for instance, they had things called mystery religions, which, uh, to take away the kind of mystery of it, <laughs> uh, basically you kind of pick and ch picked and chose, picked and chose. Um, you, <laughs> I don't know why this bothers me so bad. Um, your which gods you wanted to do, which which things you wanted to do, and in these these secret meetings, you would be for that night of that ritual, you would be just another person. It didn't matter if you're rich or poor; you could come in this mystery religion and just be a person, you know. And I think that's one of the reasons is it really gave the idea of, of unity among these people. You know, sometimes culture can can stress, you know, and it was really an escape. Escape for them. So, um, the the occultist often knows of the danger of the evil. So that's something that, that people, especially Christians, don't understand. The occultist usually knows that there's danger of evil. Um, so they use their objects for protection. But obviously, that only brings greater harm and subjects them further to the realm of the demonic. Now, see, they don't think of it like that because once again, they don't really believe in the biblical view of the world and of the spiritual things so they don't really have anything to base that against so it's really whatever thing that they believe whatever thing that they saw on tv that they believe whatever you know wherever they got that their theology of, of, of things um for a lot of people god is kind of a prick because they've seen churches like um hillsborough baptist westboro westboro yes westboro westboro baptist still saying it Golly, I said that last year, and I've still been saying it for a year straight. Westboro Baptist, you know, that's really all they see, and so they think that, you know, these people are just morons, you know, and, and so you kind of have to understand where they're coming from on that. Um, so I guess the, the first thing to do is, is to look at the Savior myth. Now, this is something that, that's pretty common because of the cult and how the cult works, and then because Christianity was kind of raised up in a culture that was very much so steeped in the occult. And because of that, it, it really obviously was going to have an impact on, on Christianity and on, on history and that kind of stuff. And to where the point nowadays, people, a lot of people believe that there's something called a savior myth. In other words, the Jesus idea isn't new. It was something that the Christians recycled from other beliefs. Um, in fact, you see this really a lot nowadays. And if you ask them, like, for instance, which one? They usually won't have a specific answer because there is no specific answer unless the person just made it up. Right. Because the truth is that Christianity absolutely is not a recycling of ancient things. And so I, I do want to kind of look at that. If you want a more um, thorough breakdown, uh, they actually have a, a pretty decent one. Um, honestly, I think some t I think there's a few things that they really excluded from their argument that really would have made it, made it persuasive. But they do have a very good um, synopsis, I guess you could say, of other gods and how they are different in their uh, savior thing. Okay, so 
this is just more of a condense. Um, first off, with Jesus, these are historical people. You know, we're not talking about Osiris. We're not talking about Anubis. We're not talking about Zeus. We're talking about actual people in the Bible. I, I think that that's kind of important. Also, we're talking about these people gave their eyewitness accounts of what happened. And this isn't just one or two that may have hallucinated. These are hundreds of people who actually walked and talked with him after his resurrection and before his resurrection. So I, 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 I don't think this needs to be something that's brushed under the rug. We're not talking about one or two people going out into, like, like Joseph Smith. There is only ever one witness to that, and that was Joseph Smith himself. You know, Charles Russell, there was really only one witness to that. It was Charles Russell himself. You know, but with this, it wasn't Jesus saying these things of himself, because John, like it says in the Gospel of John, he didn't need people to bear witness of him. He didn't need to get people to, people to um, condone his behavior, to make him feel better about himself. He didn't need that. He was the son of God, and he did what he was sent to do. He wasn't wasting his time with trying to become the prettiest girl at the dance. You see what I mean? And uh, and so because of that, uh, Jesus oftentimes wouldn't just come out and say something. You know, they'll say, are you the Christ? And he'll instead of just saying yes, he'll say, you've said it. Well, that's an ambiguous answer. Are you saying yes or no? What are you trying to say? You know, and oftentimes God, in fact, it even says this, God would, Jesus would specifically speak in riddles, you know, to kind of, just to make sure that people didn't fully get what he was saying. And even when the demons tried to say, hey, this is actually the Son of God, he would specifically tell them to be quiet, you know, to kill that, to, to squash that. So I, I think that, that kind of just needs to be uh, said. But these people who were with him in his life, you know, they bore witness to the things that happened. And like John says, you know that you know that my witness is true. Yeah, I've been, I was there for this. Um, he says in chapter, I think it's 20. But... Um, so these are historical people, eyewitnesses. I mean, these are these aren't just like people pulled out of ancient myth. Um, also, uh, Jesus is distinctively different from the others. Like, let's say there'll be a god that dies and maybe even is brought back to life. Like, for instance, um, the god of the underworld in Egypt. Um, uh, no, no, yeah, guys. Uh, I want to say Osiris. Uh, can you look that up if it's Osiris? That's going to bug me. Wait, what? Yeah. Anyways, um, like, for instance, this god will die, and then he'll be kind of alive or whatever, or brought back to life, kind of, but then he'll go and be the god of the underworld. With Christianity, we see Jesus, who is God, came as a man, and then he lived a sinless life, which we don't see in any of the gods, mm -hmm. died for people and gave himself up, wasn't accidentally killed, anything like that. He surrendered his life to die, to appease God's wrath, not to not for any other reason. And then he was resurrected right. with the promise that he will come again. And the Holy Spirit is our mark, our stamp, that he will in fact come again. So um, with that being said, did you find that out? Yeah, you were right. It was Osiris? Yeah. Okay, um, and then like you know, you have these different um, these other uh, myths that are just they're just weird. Like on one, uh, one of the gods is fighting this other god. I believe Seth and um, Horus. Oh, now I'm getting it mixed up with this other one. And anyways, he ends up taking the guy's testicle so he can't have babies anymore. But it's okay because he gets his eye, so he can't see anymore. You know, but then you know they, they reach this compromise, and, and he ends up getting his testicle back, and you know all this this whole thing. You know, they're just like based on on just myth. Yeah. We don't have this in Jesus. You know, and if you look in, in in this, she actually has a pretty, or he, I guess you could say, has a pretty decent. Um, if I can remember where it's at, about. I'm probably not going to waste the time tonight looking for it, but um, he has a pretty decent. Um, Uh, analysis of this. Anyways, I'm not going to waste the time. It, you know, it's in the Kingdom of the Cult. They have a, a, a really good uh, breakdown of the different things. And if you really study it, there is a huge difference between the Savior myths, supposedly, and Jesus. And so when people tell you, excuse me, that that's just a rip off of other things, no, it's not. And ask for proof because there is no proof. Um, 
a lot of the stories are even after Jesus by a lot. You know, and they'll point to these that supposedly Christianity ripped off of, and it's like, that's after Jesus was even alive. Were you going to say something? Yeah. Um, I seen it's been a couple of years, but scientists, like, the more they're going through, like, Jerusalem, mm -hmm. they're starting to be able to physically prove that Jesus existed. Well, I mean... I mean, there's... Yeah. Like, they, they're finding proof, and it's... Yeah, well... Uh, and then the uh, the details are very different in all the stories. I mean, it's things that, that, that they don't even sound the same. Um, obviously, Christianity was not an adaptation of religions, but it was an adaptation of Judaism. Okay? Um, because it was the fulfillment of the law. So Judaism says, hey, the law hasn't been fulfilled, whereas Christianity says, yes, this is the fulfillment of the law. Um, so it is an adaptation from Judaism. Right. So with that being said, I guess you could say that Christianity predates um, Judaism because it was based on the promise given to Abraham, which was before the law was given to Moses. But I don't know if you could say that either because Judaism was based on that same promise too. So you're kind of, I guess, stuck there. Either way, um, they both claim the same source. Just one has the fulfillment and one doesn't. So let's look at the actual ideas here. Let's start with the psychics. I guess we could say psychic phenomena. Now what this means, psychic uh, psuche, soul, and phenomena, experience. So soul experiences or, or, or experiences of, of the spiritual things. Um, so I guess in that, if you termed it like that, you could technically say that any time the gifts of the spirit move in a church, that could be considered a psychic phenomena. You see what I mean? So it's kind of a hard to... A hard to define term, but normally when people talk about psychic phenomena, they mean things like you know seances or or a ghost sighting or stuff like that. You know that's usually what they're talking about. Well, one one thing you have to take into consideration too um, on that account is that the things that God does, um, Satan tries to make a counterfeit of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going. No. I was like, man, he's really taking a long breath of air here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Um, and here's something that people don't really understand. Oftentimes, they can't be explained. Even well-documented things that we're absolutely sure that they happened, you really just can't explain them. And, and scientists oftentimes will just dismiss it as, oh, that's silly to believe that. But yet, they are still documented. So it's like, well, you can't just dismiss it. No. Especially when so many different people claim that there are have been spiritual encounters, so to just then say no, it's all physical. That's completely un un. Although it's hard to say it's unscientific because you can't prove it through science, it goes against the scientific method of observation. So it kind of is unscientific, even though you can't be proven by science. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like it's something that that there. Things that can't be explained and just ignore their existence isn't that isn't what the thinking mind should be doing. These are things that very obviously and really have happened, you know. And, and any any attempt to just oh dismiss it by oh that's just nonsense. It's like well why do you think that? There's think a lot of people who claim this happened. Go ahead. I think like a good example of like cannot be explained would be like Area 51. It's like okay <laughs> yes these people see this happen. But we can't prove that it happened. I see what you're saying. Um, but what I'm more talking about, it goes even beyond that, though, because mm -hmm. Area 51, that whole thing, I mean, we're talking about, like, one or two things or, you know, a handful of things that happened, depending on which things you can, you include as being actual encounters and which things you don't. Um, whereas we're talking about things that are progr are continually happening and have happened oh. for thousands of years, demonic possessions, for instance, which oh. have happened, I mean, years upon years. You know, and oh well, no, that doesn't happen, or it never happened, or it doesn't happen anymore. And it's like, well, I, you can't just dismiss it just because it's uncomfortable. You know, and, and I, and that's really what I'm getting at. Or just because you've never seen it. Exactly. Yeah. You can't yeah. I had a friend. Um, her mom. Uh, one time, her mom was home alone, and she was sitting down in the living room, and all the doors in her house, even like the outside doors, all of them were opening and closing for a good, good while. They're like, what the crap? <laughs> you know, what's going on? And um, it seemed like it was kind of following her brother. Like when her brother left, it stopped. It went away. That's when you need to uh, just kill him. 
<laughs> you are the bringer of darkness. You must die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and obviously, these things dwell in imitation and deceit. Satan will always imitate things, um, always seek to deceive people through things, um, always bring confusing circumstances, confusing confusing things. That That's something that shouldn't be dismissed because... We as people generally are pretty gullible. Oh, yeah. um, not on all things, but there, we all have our blind spots. That like even the people who think that they're the most, the most smart people, the smartest, I guess you'd say, even those people have it's things that they don't see that they're pretty blind to. You see what I mean? I'm trying to say that in a, like a, a douche way, but like we all. We all have, you know, little blind areas. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And and we think just because, you know, that one's not my weakness area that, that, you know. So, and obviously anyone can be corrupted. And you have to always see things in the occult as that. Um, I highly recommend not playing with things. Um, you know, it, it, if you got a Ouija board, just get rid of it. If you got tarot cards, just get rid of it. Don't play with things in the occult. Um, obviously, this shouldn't be confused with uh, fakes or entertainers. There are people... Like I explained last week, called mentalists, for instance, or other people like that, who they are entertainers. I mean, they're they're very skilled at observing and, uh, and you know that kind of stuff. Okay, that you know, don't confuse that with the real deal. Also, there's people who are fakes that just pretend, you know, um, that they'll just do anything for a buck, basically. Right. You know, you see these kinds of people at like carnivals and stuff like that. Don't confuse the real with the fake. Just because there is fake doesn't mean it's all fake. I mean, if that's true. <laughs> that would mean that most of what our government does is fake. <laughs> Just right. kidding. How, how, like, okay, so like music, mus musicians, you know. Okay. You know, like some, you know, most of them are, you know, illusions and such. But every once in a while you hear about people, they're like, oh. You Did know. you say magicians? She said musicians. <laughs> I meant musicians. Okay, because I was thinking, I don't think that mu <laughs> playing music is an illusion. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I really do it. <laughs> okay, now that I know what you're talking about. Around. But, you know, every once in a while you hear, like, oh, that person's, like, demon-possessed, and they do stuff with demons or whatever. Well, so, let me give you a good example of that. Okay. Um, one time I was watching a magic special, and there was a guy. I don't really want to say who it was because I don't want to start a whole conflict about <laughs> that. But he was in a building with the cameras rolling, and as people would, would walk by, he would have them pick out a certain person. He would go like this with his hand, and they would stop walking. And then you do go like this, and they turn around. I don't understand how that could be an illusion, unless the people were paid beforehand. Uh -huh. Perhaps. I don't understand how that could be an illusion. In which case, that very much so seemed kind of demonic. Yeah. <laughs> I am throwing that. I'm just gonna throw that out there. It seemed kind of demonic to me. I don't know. Uh -huh. um, but then there's things that that I mean. It's just an illusion, and it's yeah. just meant to be that right. for entertainment purposes, you know. You know what I mean? So if you just get, like, a check in your spirit, you should? Or, and what I'm asking is, how, how, how are you supposed to tell them apart from fakes to real people? Like, what they're claiming, what they're claiming, yeah. So well, no, not things. necessarily, because a lot of people... Um, like mentalists. Will, will claim things that... That's, well... On the show mentalist, he's a mentalist, but he claims to be a psychic. But it can work the other way too, where somebody is is not into the demonic. I mean, is into the demonic, and they claim that they're not. It's kind of a hard question. Um, yes, I think that the Holy Spirit. You have to listen for promptings. Oh. That's a hard question, bud. Sorry. And I would take into account what they claim themselves. I would absolutely take that into account. Right. Um, but remember, not all things of the cult are just going to come out and say, hey, we're yeah. serving the demons. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not going to be like that. Um, so you really have to keep your guard up. I, I'm not going to say don't watch magicians because there's nothing wrong with, with magicians. You know, Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. But, I mean... <sighs> There really is no absolute check-all. I would say if something... When you watch magicians, you kind of get used to how things work with magicians. You know, they usually have somebody as a red herring. They will distract for the thing. They usually have poorly lit areas. They'll usually have things that work on trick mirrors and stuff. stuff. A lot of flashy stuff. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And 
anything to do with the distraction. And then you kind of get a feel for the magician themselves. Right. Um, like this guy, I had suspected him of dark things for a while. But then I saw that one, and it kind of pushed me over the edge. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's involved with the cult. And I stopped watching him because I was like, that's, that's getting weird. Yeah. It's getting creepy. <laughs> See what I mean? But as far as have I ever watched a magician for the first five minutes and thought, this guy is evil. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be something you really have to just keep an eye on and, and, and see what happens. You know? Also, pay attention to the person's attitude itself. Because the demonic is all about self grudge You know, self-amazement. You know, hey, look at me, I'm so I'm so great. You know, and, and, and so watch what they claim about, like, do they claim about having godlike powers? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, do they have an attitude of just really blown out of proportion ego. Okay. Just keep an eye. You know what I mean? Uh, ask somebody else's advice. Kind of do research on the person if you're uncomfortable with it. Or if you're uncomfortable with it, just don't watch him and watch somebody else instead. Yeah. You know? So. I wish I had a real cut and, you know, real clear answer for that, but there really is no clear answer for that. Anyways. Uh, psychics, just like demons, cannot read your mind. They can do something called reading your mail. Now that's basically where they take body their do what? Stuff. Yes, they exactly. They they pick up on your body language, right. or sometimes a demon will tell something that has happened. A demon can convey to a person something that has happened in the past, not something you were thinking. And then a demon can take a pretty good stab at what you were thinking at the time, mm -hmm. but they can't actually read your mind. Okay, there's right. a big difference there. <clears throat> so, uh. Access to hidden knowledge that absolutely goes right, right in hand with what I was just saying, including some future events. I don't know how that's possible, but demons are capable of knowing some future events. I don't understand how. Are you going to say thing, something? Um, I would say as far as the, like, watching them and stuff like that. Watching, is, watching like, what? Like magicians. And oh, okay. And stuff like so that. So going back to the thing Grace yeah. was saying? Okay, go ahead. Um. In Harry Houdini's day, he actually um, went about and revealed a lot of fake psychics and mediums uh -huh. and stuff, and that's what got him killed, basically, it was because he was like, I know legit, and these guys are, are fake, you know? And so, I mean, one, one thing you got to look at is... Are they, like, really dead set on claiming what they're doing as well? Because a lot of magic shows and stuff, you know, they play it yeah. off. You know, like, okay, guys, this isn't really happening, but you're seeing this happening and stuff. Like, are they really claiming, like, I have these powers? Yeah. And sometimes they'll claim it as part of the show. Right. You know. So, okay. I'm done. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> hey, you keep doing that to me, man. You need to, you need to really more. emphasize, like, uh, what was the last thing you said? Um, part of the show. Part of the show and finale. No, in sync. <laughs> in sync. <laughs> huh. You know, I think that that would really help me. <laughs> Where you look like you're itching to say something. I was, and then I forgot what it was. Oh. oh. Well, I'm gonna keep going. If you remember, you just shoot your hand up or something, and I'll just like stop talking just like that, okay? Um. So somehow d demons are able of knowing at least, and I don't. Oh, remember what it was. Um. Uh, like some of them will just, like, kind of laugh it off. Yeah. Like, they do it more for, like, just, like, a certain age group. Are we like, on the magicians? Help. Yes. Okay. All what right. Sorry. I, I, Sorry. I'm I pressing forward, and you guys are back. <laughs> I, I, let's go back. <laughs> like, you can tell just by, like, like, some of them will just, like, laugh off what they're doing. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, yeah, you know I did that. You know, just, like, they do it more as a joke. Uh -huh. Like, you can you can hear it usually. Yeah. And, like, their voice, so, you know. For instance, if you see somebody that looks like Will Arnett... Uh, yeah, don't. It's just a joke. Totally, totally fine. You didn't make the yacht disappear. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Anyways, um, and so somehow, if we're not, are we done talking about magicians? Okay, all right. Unless you want to. I don't want to say this for like the umpteenth time just to go back to the magicians. I mean, I'm fine with talking about magicians. Just tell me before I plow ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, so somehow demons are able of knowing some things. Now, I don't know if God reveals to them some things. 
if they ask God about some things or they just inherently know some things. I don't know. Maybe there are some things that are written as this is going to happen and that everything in the spiritual realm knows about it. Or maybe it's something that I see, I don't know. Right. There's some theories that maybe like when they were in God's throne room, they ever heard something. You know, I, I don't know. I, I really can't make fun of it because we really don't know. Right. How is it possible that a demon could actually accurately give a, a, a day that actually does happen? Obviously not all the time. They don't have 100% accuracy. That's, That's one of the big things. God's apostles, God's disciples, they have – prophets. God's prophets have 100% accuracy. Everything that the prophets prophesied in the Bible – Absolutely, did happen or is yet to happen. Okay. There's a, with that being said, though, um, uh, with that being said, though, uh, the 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 occultists sometimes do get things right, and we don't really know how. Like my dad shared in on Wednesday nights a couple of times about how he went to a psychic, and they told him the specific day that he was going to stop drinking, that he was going to stop being an alcoholic, and that was the day that he got saved. How did? the psychic know that day? I don't know. I don't know. So we have to admit that demons do have some knowledge about future events, or at least some of the future events. Right. I don't know how. But that is something that we need to be aware of. Um, very much so a use of the divination and demonic powers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, which we're, we'll look into in the and in, in, as we keep going. So the first thing, excuse me, the first thing is called levitation. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, I'm sure you all know it's where an object floats. Now there is such a thing as as an illusion of, of a of a object floating. You see a lot of times, you know, magicians make it appear as an object is floating. But then there's actual levitation. Now, this is, as far as I can understand, this is what happens when a demon interacts with an object and lifts it. Okay, that seems to be what causes that to happen. Um, we don't really know for sure, though. I don't know. And then, uh, next thing is a lot of people who claim that levitation is a legitimate thing point to Jesus. Didn't Jesus levitate on the water? And the, the the thing is, is you actually have to pay attention to what the what the Greek says. It doesn't say Jesus walked over the water. It doesn't say that he floated over the water. It said Jesus walked on the water. Um, there's a little preposition there that really clarifies the matter. He was actually walking on the water. There was no levitation required. Um, and as far as that's concerned, I'm pretty sure that God can do whatever he wants. However, with that being said, the the claim is that Jesus is part used the tools of the cult, and Jesus did not use the tools of the cult. So. Um, did Jesus levitate when he left his apostles? He rised up into the air. Well, I can actually see where this one comes from, but not so much. With levitation, the object goes up, and then it comes back down. Jesus didn't come back down. Okay, If he's still up there somewhere, I, I would think that a plane would have hit him by now. Uh, he went up into the sky, and then he went through this dimension into the dimension of heaven. Left our dimension. Okay, So... He's not in the sky somewhere, and he's not up in space somewhere. He, he right. left our dimension, okay? Right. So when he comes back, in the end, he's going to come back into our dimension, okay? But that no, wasn't isn't really levitation. He was lifted up. So, uh, you know what's funny is um, the Spanish word uh, is uh, levantate. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> levitation. Yeah. I thought it was funny. Whatever. Fine, don't laugh, jerks. <laughs> Um, the next thing is called apportation, apporting. Uh, yeah, let's get, let me give you an easier uh, definition here. There you go. A solid object transports from one location to another. Why couldn't we just call it transporting? Right. I don't know. Yeah. These are the questions I like to get answered. Um, and there are actually documented cases of this actually legitimately happening. Huh. Where somebody goes from one place and he teleports to another place 300 miles away where people testified of seeing him there exactly where he said he was going to go and it was too quick to have been through train or airplane or through any other means we're talking about the span of a couple seconds so uh, i don't know what to tell you guys seems like this is a thing that can happen so then the question comes did philip apport in the gospel of acts well the truth is that acts doesn't really clarify it just says it, let me say that differently Acts says it in a very ambiguous way. It doesn't really 
shed too much light. And the, the take that they say in the book, The Kingdom of the Cult, is they say, you know, don't rush to a conclusion that's not – doesn't have proof, especially since it's the only occurrence in the Bible where that potentially happens. I would I would say that that's a good stance to take, um, but I would also say that there's nothing inherently wrong necessarily about God making taking someone from one place and putting them in another place. I mean, there's nothing necessarily wrong about that, in my opinion. I mean, he didn't do it through the sources of the occult. God moved him, if he did, in fact, a port. So, I don't know how you want to take that. If you want to take their view, if you want to take what I just said, or if you want to take the, you know, whatever. But we do know that he wasn't involved in the occult. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, then the next thing here, materialization. This will probably be the last thing that we look at. And if you're curious as to my view about the whole um, astrology thing, we'll look at that in two weeks when we come back the week after um, a lot. So, anyways, uh, materialization, that's basically our physical appearance of a departed person. Now, obviously, we know that this is a demon who takes on the physical. Um, yeah. Uh, but, you know, then we have the instance in 1 Samuel, for instance, where Samuel actually does a Appear. So we have a few options. A, there was an angel who only appeared to be Samuel. Not likely. Two, um, it was God who appeared as Samuel. Also not likely. Or three, it was Samuel. That's the most likely, especially since the text says that it actually was Samuel. And the um, medium gets so scared that it actually was the person that she kind of freaks out. She's like, whoa, <laughs> this was not supposed to happen. You know, so then when it actually is Samuel, she's like, "Whoa!" So it seems to be implying that it actually was Samuel. So how does that how does that work? I don't know. Did God temporarily send him back in his physical body, or would he just appear in like an ethereal body, like a, a you know what I mean, like a, not not a solid body? Like if you guys have ever seen that movie Ghost, with I think it had Patrick Swayze in it or something like that. Yeah. Um, how he appeared in that movie where he was kind of he was like his body or whatever, but you could like. It wasn't solid. Like transparent. Yeah, transparent. There's the word. Uh, maybe it was something like that? I don't know. But we do know that God radically broke through that seance. And the end, the witch of Endor was just completely like blown away. She's like, holy crap, you're the king. I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways. Um, I wonder if she continued doing that. Right? That. And here's yeah. the thing. is like King Saul, who's supposed to be ridding the places this, not only goes and visits her, but then he actually gives her a seal of approval and says, ah, you're not going to get any judgment from me. Uh, what? <laughs> Is that, am I the only person who read that and thought, what? You can't do that. God, God didn't let you do that. <laughs> Anyways, um, it sometimes involves something that's called ectoplasm. Now, this is like a wow. kind of like a gooey substance that's left. I honestly thought the ectoplasm was completely made up because uh, movies like Ghostbusters, right? Yeah, yeah. Evidently, it's actually a real thing. Really? Who knew? Huh. So, I don't know about that. That's, that's... And in fact, in some seances, they were giving, um, he was giving examples in the book, and in some seances, um, the, the, the person, you know, the demon, who's appearing as a person, uh, will actually do different things so they can see the ectoplasm. Now, I don't, I, I, it wasn't clear if this ectoplasm disappears after so long, or if it disappears with, with the demon, or... If you can keep it in a jar? Like, I don't know. That's a good question. I'd like to know the answer to. You know, is somebody legitimately walking around with a, with a, with a container of ectoplasm over their mantelpiece? <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, anyways, um, and it's actually demons who looked at this. Does God ever send people back? For instance, the case of, in 1 Samuel. That's a good question. We don't really know the specifics of exactly how it happened. So we're kind of left with a little bit of a conundrum, but we do know that it's somehow different from resurrection. Because a resurrection, the person's physical body is raised back up, their spirit goes back into it, and here we have a person sitting in front of us, just like Lazarus, like Lazarus or Jesus. Like we are right here. They are resurrected. But with materialization, it it's different than that. The person isn't resurrected and they don't stay. So does God ever send people back? Now, some people think that Enoch and Elijah are going to be sent back um, during the end times as the two prophets. Now, 
That's not necessarily for certain because John the Baptist was a call, was called Elijah the prophet. Right. And also, it seems like that was actually considered their death, biblically. And so it might just be someone in the spirit of Elijah and Enoch. In fact, it never even says that these two prophets are called Enoch and Elijah. That's something. It just says two prophets. We've come up with. Right. Generals. So you kind of have to be careful with getting too far on this. And I don't want it to sound like we can't be uncertain of anything, but we can we can't be certain about things that we add to the Bible. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> You can't be certain about things that you just come up with, you know. Um, I mean, that's how that goes. Um, so it seems like it's different from resurrection, and it seems like if the situation calls for it, God can send the person back, but that he typically does not. As far as 1 Samuel, I believe that he did send a materialization of 1 Samuel. So... That's my view. I'll let you guys brainstorm about it yourselves. Next week, we'll start up with dream interpretation. And so I will take careful note of which slide I'm on. I'm on slide 12 of 42. Holy crap. Do you guys want to do a few more tonight? Yeah. Okay, we'll do a few more tonight. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be like a month-long lesson. Yeah. Yeah. It's 12 of 42. What am I thinking? Um, okay, let's talk about dream interpretation. <laughs> okay. Um, certain things in dreams mean specific things. Uh, people in the cult are very much so focused on dreams. Uh, they have entire like you know books and websites and all kinds of stuff dedicated to you know finding these hidden uh, images. You know, and he gives some examples in here. But you know, if you see certain kind of flowers, if you you see certain kind of water, you know, if you see certain kind of events that happen, you know, all these different things they they add up to different things, and you have to like I guess remember them so you can remember what the different symbols mean. And they basically can either tell you fortune or, you know, alert you of some evil or different things like that. Uh, um, one thing, uh, there's an episode I was watching the other day of Everybody Hates Chris, uh -huh. where the dad was using a dream book to try to interpret the lottery numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, Daniel and Joseph gave a, a pretty good um, response to this, and Joseph and Genesis... 40 verse 8 or something like that. Um, and Daniel in really pick a spot in the book of Daniel uh, where it says, you know, dream interpretation belongs to God. And, you know, they pretty much say the same thing. Do not the interpretation of dreams belong to God? Right. So it seems once again that we shouldn't get overly wrapped up in things that people, uh, guys, people's opinions of of interpreting dreams that if God wants and also I, I, I well let me come back to that that if God wants us to know the interpretation we should seek him not someone else not different you know um, symbolism and different stuff like that um, crap what else was I going to say that's why I shouldn't have come back for it guys that's why she just said it and also um, that's the most unhelpful prompt that's Grace. What you said. can I give you something to throw at you do you, do you have a kind of issue there's a, there's, a there's a Bible there. It's an NKJV. Those things are. Those was hurt. Um, <laughs> ah, it was about dream interpretation. What was I saying when I when I broke off? Talked about Daniel. Yeah. yeah. The, the dreams belong to God. Right. Yeah. If you um want to know what it means, seek God. All right, seek. This is going to bother me, guys. Oh, I have it on the next point. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I anticipated that I was going to say this, guys. <laughs> Not every dream has hidden meanings. Sometimes dreams are just dreams. Sometimes they just have to do with what you did that day or what you yeah. worried what about. What you ate, or, what you worried about. Uh, Absolutely. What you thinking of before you went to bed. Yeah, if you watched a movie. It's not even in your subconscious. No. Yeah, subconscious. Subconscious. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's just things that, like, for whatever reason, your mind has stored away like somewhere back there, you know. Uh, so I, I I've seen a lot of Christians get way off with um, with dreams, you know. Every dream has a has a thing, and you just have to stumble upon the meaning and stuff, and it's like, okay, all right, we're getting into the crazy guys. Can um, demons influence your dreams? Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, a lot of times demons can do something that's called um, I don't know what the technical term is, but it's it's a partial paralysis uh, where you lose part of your motor functions. 
Um, but I've known a lot of people who, uh, when they w wake up, they can't move. And I'm not talking about that thing where you've got lack of oxygen to your brain, and so it just takes you a while for your... I mean, where... Um, sleep paralysis? Like a yeah, like not sleep paralysis. It's like an actual thing that happens uh, where you where you will oftentimes feel a dark presence. You oftentimes feel a pressure is pushing down on you, stuff like that. Um, or sometimes where somebody will be talking and a demon will um, take away things like uh, speech for a limited time. You know, um, things like that. Where and these, the there are physical phenomena that happen that are similar to these things, and you have to be discerning. Not every time that happens is it something of the spirit, like sleep paralysis. You know, where where you just were sleeping wrong, and your it just takes a minute for the oxygen to circulate for you to be able to move again. Is it that's not that's not demonic necessarily, you know. And so it doesn't be noted that there are differences there, but um, that is something that demons can do, and they can influence things like that um, to degrees. But once again. Uh, only really to the degree that you let them. You know what I mean? If you have a bunch of stuff in your house, I mean, you're just asking for it. You know, you you watch a bunch of movies and stuff like that that have about a bunch of demonic stuff going on. I mean, it's, you're just asking for something to happen. And, you know, it, it, especially when you have kids in the house, you know, kids are a lot easily more easily influenced with right, demons than um, than us. They're, they're more innocent. Yeah, it seems like that, but also because, you know, they don't have a soul in them yet, you know. So. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm know, joking. Know, right? I'm totally right. joking. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but, uh, you know, so oftentimes when you're letting that kind of stuff in the house, your kids will be a lot more susceptible to it. Kind of like, um, it seems like sometimes pets can be real susceptible right, to it right. too. Um you know, so they'll just start acting weird, having strange dreams, uh, waking up screaming, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm not trying to say, make this sound like it's not a big deal. It is a big deal, but I'm really tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so, yes, absolutely, um, to some degree. Um, yeah. So healing. Uh, the cult has their own form of healing. Uh, if you read the Frank Prady book, visitation um, it had examples of this um, which it doesn't necessarily happen like that but eh, good enough I mean it just gives, helps you get the idea of it um, a lot of it sometimes can revolve around more practical health you know like herbal supplements and stuff like that so basically natural remedies but they give you the natural remedy under the inspiration of a demon you know where although the information is true they got it through a demon you know what I mean um, and obviously demons have been around for a long time. They know what kind of foods are healthy for you. I mean, right. it's not that complicated of a concept. They were there at, at creation. I'm pretty sure they were like, hey, okay, I get this. Not that, but remember that demons and angels, they have limited knowledge. Yeah. And you don't know if before the fall, if they, you know, sought things from God that God revealed to them. You know what I, you know what I mean? There's, there's some things that maybe God told them what happened or something or the, you know and and then later when they fell they just used it you know in wrong means so i mean I, I'm, I'm not trying to get too far off here i'm just saying you can't claim to know everything about a realm that you do not exist in we don't exist in the dimension of the demon of, of the demon so we really can't say too much also remember that we weren't around back then so um some, most of the time with the cultic healings, there's no actual healing. Um, sometimes a demon can cause an illusion, that kind of stuff. Uh, sometimes there is an actual healing, though. Um, a lot of times it's, it's done mostly just for money. And, or, I'm sorry, it is done in the occult world for either money or praise. Um, and sometimes the healing won't last. Yeah. So there is that. Um, and a lot of people seek the cultic because of fear. Like some people will seek healings from the, in the cult because... They don't want to die. Some people will seek um, seances because they're they weren't ready to say goodbye. They just want some closure. They want you know and stuff like that. And they'll, so they'll they'll do things to kind of get um, you know uh, some form of, of closure. So we are now on slide 15 of 42, right here. Uh, predictions. Um, it's not uncommon at all in the occult to have predictions of different things. Absolutely not uncommon. And that's one of the reasons why I, I specifically referenced these people who claim to know the end, even these Christian people who claim to know the time of the end, as false prophets. 
because these are things that the demons do, remember? And God has a 100% accuracy rate. So we know that, that none of those people were sent from God because it didn't happen. And anybody who tries to claim it by, okay, well, maybe through prayer, God moved the date. Then he would have revealed it through the prophet. Yeah. See what I mean? Like, for instance, um, you know, David's like, I think I'm going to build this pre and build this this temple. And the prophet tells him, yeah, go for it. But then he leaves, and he said, and God tells him, no, go back and tell him no. So he goes back and tells him no. Or um, the the one king that's that's on his deathbed, and so the prophet goes to him and says, you're going to die. You get your house in order, you're going to die. And then he, he, he asks God for more time, and so God sends the prophet back and says, okay, now tell him he's got 15 more years. See what I mean? It, if there was no, God didn't audibly right. change his mind where everybody heard that God, not changed his mind, but because the circumstance changed, God changed how he was reacting to it or responding in it. Um, then that person's a false prophet. But if God then goes back and, 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 and does something different than he had planned because people repent or whatever, like for instance in Jonah, where I'm going to destroy Nineveh. That's just how it's going to be. But then Jonah tells them this, and they repent. So God says, I'm not going to destroy Nineveh. See what I mean? Yeah. Now, it's kind of important to note that Jonah didn't go back and tell them that God had turned his wrath from them. I feel like that was a huge mistake on Jonah's part and might have been responsible for their later relapse, um, which is why the prophet Nahum was sent back to Nineveh. It was because it had been about 100 years, and they had... Forsaken God again. Well, maybe if Jonah would have told them God's response, they would have had something to base it on. Maybe if Jonah would have done something to help encourage spiritual growth. Maybe if Jonah would have done something besides getting his feelings all hurt and whining, whining about a plant dying and, and all that. Maybe, you know, things could have been different. But obviously that's huge speculation. We don't know if things could have been different. We don't know if he didn't. Because Jonah is a very limited, uh, detailed book. Anyways, um... We have Nostradamus. A lot of people mention Nostradamus. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh well, his, his predictions have come true." Here's the thing about Nostradamus' pr predictions: they are insanely vague, like insanely vague, and not one of his predictions have ever been attributed to something before that thing happened. Only through looking through things backwards, it's called I think something clairvoyance or something like that. Can you even attribute it to something? Like, it just sounds like nonsense. And it's like, oh, this was that, and this was that. I mean, it, I, yeah, I, I guess it is. But, I mean, see what I mean? I wouldn't go out and buy Nostradamus' work and start looking for more prophetic things because we know that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet, and that only comes through the Holy Spirit. And we also know that um, any other form of prophecy is of the demonic, which is not going to be 100% accurate all the time. So some of his prophecies might have been true, and some of them have not. So I mean, you, you can attribute them whatever you want. Oh, Nostradamus wasn't this. Nostradamus, it doesn't matter. If, if he got prophetic utterances, there was either through the Holy Spirit or through the, the demonic. And if, judging by how they're written, it wasn't through the Holy Spirit. So I mean, so, um, so only his things were only attributed after the events happened. Um, they're only occasionally right. <laughs> God's prophets have a 100% accuracy, though. Um, I, I said that 100 times with only occasionally right. Uh, uh, someone, uh, you know, uh, uh, psychics or whatever, they'll say something, and, and one thing will be will turn out to be true, and then sometimes they'll be wrong, and people keep going because like, well, yeah, but sometimes they're right. And the truth is, like, do you really want to put your trust in something that's only right half the time? Like, I, I don't know about that. You know, it just seems a little bit far-fetched. Um, so, uh, yeah. And also, uh, God's prophets are helpful, whereas the false prophets tend to be trying to be more mystical. It's like they try and go out of the way to make things hard to understand. Read through Nostradamus' uh, uh, prophecies, it, it, if you dare. You know, it just they they a lot of them just sound like just nonsense. So, we'll stop there. We're now on, on, on 16, which takes us to Poltergeist, and I think that's that's better. 16 and 42, we can do we can do that in a week, right? Because we aren't going to have a game. We aren't going to have a prayer. They're just going to go straight into it. And so I think we'll be able to get from 16 through 42. Right. Any questions before we stop?